Hello and welcome to another training session. Now we're going to carry on looking at our calendar that we're building for Power BI and we're going to now look at adding in holiday dates. So let's just quickly recap. Here we were in Excel, we set a start date and an end date and then we click fill dates to get one of every day between our start and finish date. We then created a counting period, so this is a, a little table to create some APs and we also have determined what days of the week are weekends and here we see that we have Friday and Saturday as our weekend and now what we're going to do is we're going to build another table on another sheet and this one the table itself is called D holidays and this contains the date and the name of public holidays which are also going to be non-working days so eventually our weekends will be non-working days our holidays will be non-working days and what we'll finally do is we'll put in an exception table and the exception would be even though they would normally be a holiday in this date they're going to be a working day so let, that's later on for now let's focus on the holidays so what we have is we have that Excel and if I now show us the Power Query editor the query editor we have a query which brings in the holiday table so it finds the source of the file which is the Excel workbook we navigate to the relevant table which is called D holidays and all it does there is change the type of the data within there which changes this into a date and this into name of holiday what we're now going to do is merge this into our calendar table so we're going to merge where the date and we're going to get where the date equals the date in the calendar table we're going to get returned the name of the holiday now this is almost like doing a VLOOKUP except instead of that we're going to use the merge queries and I'm going to merge into my calendar table so here is where I actually did that so before I've merged the holidays we can see the various columns we've got as soon as I merge the holidays in I get a table in every row and I then push this button here to expand out the table and what we then end up with is the option to choose which of these we want now we don't need date because we've already got the date in the date column so we've just chosen the name of holiday um, what we're also going to do is once we've expanded it we'll see that if there is no day there it will say null so we will only have something in there when there actually is a holiday and in that case we'll get returned the name of that holiday rather than the null values so the null values all equate to it's not a holiday and like I say when we do find a holiday day that will give us the actual date and there was one there that we just whizzed past we can see there aren't very many holidays An easy way to see them is to click on the drop down and then we'll see there are not only nulls, there are also these named holidays. Okay, so that's all we're going to do to get in our public holidays. However, there is one more thing that we're going to take a look at, and this is where we have days which are extra working days. So here we have a date which would normally be a holiday but in this case this is our end of year sale on New Year's Eve and so we've declared that is a working day irrespective of whether it was a weekend or a public holiday or any other type of holiday in this case in our company this is a working day so this table here is called D extra working and we do exactly the same process for that so we've got another table here D extra working we do the query that points to the Excel file, navigates to the table which is called the extra working, and then changes the type of the, the column, so text and date. And that again is so that we can match when we do our merge. So again, come across here and merge, merges into our calendar table once more. And here's where we merge the extra working. And again, the same process as before. We end up with a table in this D extra working column we click on there that will expand the table out 
and once more we decide that we don't need the date component we just need the reason for the extra working and that's all we're going to do and this gives us again for the vast majority of them they will be null but if I want to see what the other options are we can see that here we have our end of year sale as well as the null so we do have multiple options there the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename some of these columns so you'll see that I've actually rather than having that as reason I've now called that column extra working and I'm now going to add in another custom column now this is the custom column that does all the magic so the custom column itself has a formula in it and the formula will work out first of all whether it's an extra working day if it's an extra working day it will be a number one irrespective of any other settings if it is a weekend which is not extra working it'll be a zero and if it is a holiday which is not extra working it will also be a zero all other options will be one in other words a working day now if we look at the formula that made that up this is just an if formula or an if function and it's just nested so it says if it's extra working then so if extra working is not equal to null then it equals one so that is if it's an extra working day it is a one otherwise if it's a weekday in other words if the weekday equals no then it's a weekend obviously or the name of holiday is something then it equals naught so in both of those cases if the weekday is a weekend or it's a holiday then it's a zero provided it's not an extra working day and all other options will be the one this gives us our extra column here which says it is a working day or a non-working day all that remains is to change that into the correct type which in this case is numeric one two three and we now have some ones and zeros in here and in our report if we picked a date from and a date to we can now add up all of this column for the days in between so it filter by the days in between the date and the sum of these is the number of working days between those two dates so if you wanted to work out for example how long it took between an order arriving and an order being processed but you wanted to know what that was in your company's working time then this would be the way to do it okay i do hope that's been useful for you as always thank you for listening and don't forget to like and subscribe.